Okay, this topic um, is asking about the shape of the molecule. So when we're looking at this question, when it says word or two word phrase, we have to use this diagram, we have to spell it correctly. Um, and we're looking at molecular geometry. So if it has a lone pair, we need to uh, take that into account. So if it has three electron domains, but one of them is a lone pair, that's going to be a bent molecule, okay? If it um, is, if it has five electron domains and one of them is a lone pair, then it's gonna be a sawhorse molecular geometry. So this is really important to pay attention to the lone pairs. This is also something that you have to spell the names right. So if you can fit it, this is something that I would put on my note card. Uh, okay. So, what word or two-word phrase best describes the shape of the carbon dioxide molecule? So, for this topic, the first thing that you need to do is draw the Lewis structure to figure out how many electron domains are around the central atom. So, we have, right, my molecule down. We have carbon and two oxygens. So, for a Lewis structure, we need to figure out how many valence electrons are going to be shown in our structure. So carbon is in the 4a column, it has four valence electrons. Oxygen is in the 6a column, it has six valence electrons. So we've got two oxygen, so two times six is 12, plus four is 16. So we have 16 valence electrons that we need to show. Carbon has four, oxygen has All right. Okay, so that's 16. All right, so we're going to pick a central atom. We're going to pick carbon as our central atom because it's carbon and also it's less electronegative. It shares better than oxygen. Then we're going to connect our oxygens to our central atom. So we have two, four electrons that we've used so far. And we've got 12 valence electrons left. So I'm going to start by putting them around the outer atoms, 2, 4, 6, in pairs. 2, 4, 6. So now these outer oxygen atoms have 8 valence electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Carbon has 2, 4 in these bonds. This is just a bond. Okay. Then the next thing that we're going to do is carbon only has 4, so we're going to make these oxygens share. Carbon dioxide is a molecule that comes up a lot, so it wouldn't hurt to memorize its Lewis structure. Or you can figure it out every time that works too. Um, but some of these, it's starting, they'll start being a pattern, so you'll to see them. You'll see them a lot. Okay, so now carbon has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So everything satisfies the octet rule. So then we're going to look at carbon. So carbon is the central atom. We're going to see how many um, electron groups are around carbon. So this counts as one. It's a double bond. It has two bonds, but it's really just one area where electrons live. And here's another area where electrons live. So this has two electron dense areas. So then we're going to use our chart. This chart is in the chapter four notes section module in Canvas. And so, again, we're looking at molecular geometry, but this one, this molecule doesn't have any lone pairs, so we don't, this one's the same as if it didn't have lone pairs, because it doesn't. Okay, so it has two electron-dense areas. Um, its molecular geometry would be, because it has no lone pairs, it's going to be linear. So then we have to spell that correctly in Alex. This would be linear. This is a linear molecule. Because they're asking about the molecule, this is uh, something that you really have to watch out for. Okay, let's practice again. This one is PCL3. So we're looking for word or two word phrase that best describes the shape of the phosphorus trichloride molecule. Okay, so that's really important. That's also um, it's giving you the prefix for three. So if you can't remember the prefix and you're lucky enough to get that same prefix, you can use that. Okay, so phosphorus, trichloride, 
we need to figure out how many valence electrons are first. So how many valence electrons are going to be in this molecule? So let's go to our periodic table. Phosphorus is in the 5A column, so it has five valence electrons. Chlorine is in the 7A column, it has seven valence electrons. There's three of them. So uh, we've got 21 valence electrons from chlorine, and we have five from phosphorus. So if we add that up, that's 26. So we're drawing the Lewis structure because we first we need to figure out the electron groups around the central atom to figure out our shape. So phosphorus goes in the middle because there's only one of them. It's also less electronegative. It shares better. Okay, my markers about to die. All right, and then we're going to start filling out. Okay, so we've got two, four, six. We've used up six electrons. We've got 20 left. We're going to start by putting them around these chlorines to fill up their octet. So I'm putting six around each chlorine. That, we've used up 18 valence electrons. We've got two left. This is easier. Okay, so phosphorus needs to have two on to fill its octet. So chlorine has two, four, six, eight. Phosphorus has two, four, six, eight. The chlorines are all the same. Okay, so now we need to look at phosphorus and figure out how many electron groups we have. One, two, three, four electron groups. And we have one of those is a lone pair. one lone pair. So we're going to go back to our note sheet. We have four electron dense areas. So if we're just looking at the electrons, it's tetrahedral, but it's not tetrahedral because we have one lone pair. So if we have one lone pair, but we have four electron groups, then the molecular geometry is going to be trigonal pyramidal. So we need to spell this correctly in Alex. Um, this is something that's tricky for me, so I would definitely put this on my note card so that I can get this point. So trigonal parameter. Let's try to spell it right. Trigonal. Let's see. Trigonal. Pyramidal. 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 Okay. So I need to work on my spelling. Okay. Pyramidal. Okay. All right. Let's check that. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, this one is, what is the best, the two word, word or two word phrase that best describes the shape of the nitrate ion? So again, the first thing that we need to do is draw the Lewis structure. And the first thing that we need to do for the Lewis structure is to figure out how many valence electrons are in this structure. So we've got nitrogen, which is in the 5A column. So it's gonna bring us five. Nitrogen bring us five. And oxygen, there's two of them. Oxygen's right next to it. It's in the 6A column. It's going to bring us six each, and there's two of them. And then we have this minus. So remember, if we have a minus charge, that means we get one extra electron. This minus gives us, we have one extra negative charge. So this gives us 12. And then we have 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 12 is 18. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is pick a central atom. So I'm going to say nitrogen is a central atom because there's only one of them. And I'm going to attach oxygen. Oh, I guess I shouldn't put it right where my math is going. Okay, oops, that looks like a double bond. It's just a single bond right now. Two, four. We've used four electrons so far. 
Now we have 14 left. Okay, let's put them around this, the outer atoms first. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we've used 12 electrons. We have two left. So we're going to start by putting them on this nitrogen. Okay, so now we look at the oxygen. Oxygen here has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Um, nitrogen only has two, four, six. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of the oxygens and say you have to share with nitrogen. So I'm going to pick this one. This one's going to pick, or excuse me, move the lone pair onto the nitrogen. So I'm going to redraw this. So we've got nitrogen double bonded to oxygen. We have nitrogen with a lone pair on the top. And we have oxygen with three lone pairs. Okay, so then this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So everything is following the octet rule. This is an ion, so technically we would need to draw the brackets around it to show that it's a negative ion, an anion. And then we need to look at the electron groups around the central atom. So this nitrogen, how many electron dense areas does it have? So it has a lone pair, it has this bond, and it has this bond. So that's three electron groups. Let's write that maybe up here. Three electron groups around nitrogen. And we have one lone pair. So then we're going to use our chart to figure out what is the molecular geometry. So we're saying, okay, we know the lone pair is there. How does that affect where the atoms are, the molecular geometry? So we have three electron group dense areas around our central atom, um, but we're looking at the molecular geometry. We know that because it says that right here. What is the best shape of, excuse me, fruit, word or two word phrase that best describes the shape of the ion. So ion or molecule, we're looking at molecular geometry. So because it has one lone pair, we're looking at molecular geometry or ion geometry, it's going to have a bent geometry. We have three electron dense areas, one is a lone pair, so overall the molecule takes a bent form. We're looking at an oxygen, a nitrogen, and an oxygen. Okay. All right, so then we put that into our text box. So any of these are possible on the test, so I would put this on my note card.